Fast 8 is dead. Well, the old Fast 8 that we all know and love. Let me explain. Previously, getting to level 8 was, in theory, an endgame board. As long as you hit all of your upgrades on stage 4, then you could usually just play for a win out. It was a really common strategy adopted by many streamers, who basically wouldn't play the game in stage 2 and 3, make as many econ intervals as possible, and then they would just all in at 4-1 or 4-2, and as long as they hit their board, it was a win out. However, this all changed when level 10 was naturally added to the level curves, and it kind of implied that players were supposed to get to level 9 in a lot more of their games, and level 10 was the new luxury. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you're actually supposed to play the new Fast 8 into Fast 9. So what's going wrong? Well, most players that Fast 8 this game usually do it on 4-2 with around 30 gold. And with this setup, it means that even if you are relatively lucky with your rolls, you're not going to have enough money to buy the entire board, and it usually baits players into rolling less than 10 gold. This means that if you drop your econ to below 10 gold, you're not going to have enough money to consistently buy charms and hit the rest of your board, and when you do finally make it to stage 5, you're going to be so broke that there's no hope of you ever going 9. So why does this strategy fail? Well, 5 costs this set are kind of broken. Most of the time you want to be capping your boards in the front line with Diana, Morgana and Briar. You don't necessarily have to play all 3, but usually you want to be playing around at least 1 to 2 of them. You also want to try and cap your board playing around Xerath with Arcana. You don't necessarily want to hit Xerath on level 8 as he doesn't really do much in the early game and he's kind of too expensive to play anyway. However, once you stack up your charms and you can get that bonus true damage, you do eventually want to be playing him, which is kind of why you need to get to level 9. The strategy also fails if reroll and hero augments are in the game. This is because these comps should be spiking when they hit their upgrades and if you don't even have enough money to buy your board on stage 4, if you don't have the HP to lose a few rounds in stage 4, then you're already going to be putting yourself into lethal heading into stage 5, which is why we need to focus on HP preservation throughout the entire game so we can leverage it and use it as a form of econ. So how can we excel in this new fast 8 into fast 9 strategy? Well the first thing to do is uh, recognize your spot if you're playing in a galaxy that doesn't offer you any extra resources, uh, mainly in the form of econ, then you might want to consider playing around some of the reroll options. If you're given a lot of reroll Copies then definitely should be leaning into those if you don't have a win streak tempo setup or you don't have access to extra econ. The second option is to play around the lobby tempo. So remember that if you can't afford to hit your entire board on 4-2, then what's to say that everyone else can? This means that you need to recognize the fact that if you're playing in a lobby where other people are also playing fast 8, when you're all inning on 4-2, you want to recognize the fact that the majority of these guys probably didn't hit their entire board, so there's no reason for you to feel panicked and for you to all in and try and hit everything on 4-2, as it's much better to spread out your gold and roll consistently for charms across stage 4. You get exponentially more gold if you roll consistently across 4-2 all the way until 4-6. This is because if you roll consistently throughout the rounds, not only do you save money by making econ intervals, but if you get a charm every single round, you'll be a lot more efficient in terms of your econ, because some of the charms just straight up give you econ, but also the combat power that you get from some of these very cheap charms is a lot more valuable than just sending all your gold on 4-2. The third strategy that you can use to excel in this playstyle is to play around item holders. For example, if you're playing around Frost plus one, you're obviously Vertical Frost, you're playing around Olaf as one of your main carries as well as Varus, but let's say that you miss. You don't hit Nasus two, you don't hit Olaf two, and of course you don't hit Varus two. Well, Hui is actually a pretty decent item holder, and because you're already playing around the Frost opener, it's usually easy to just hold on to extra copies of Hui. And let's say you're playing around Shoujin red buff Varus, well, you can just itemize Hui two until you actually manage to find your other upgrades. There's other examples of this, for example, if you're playing the Callista board and you just happen to not hit any Callistas, what are you supposed to do? Keep the Rage Blade on an Ash 2? Well, maybe you could have held on to a random Olaf 1 star and then also hold on to Jinx 2. If you happen to hold on to Jinx 2, then now you have a perfect item holder for Callista. It's a little bit more of an obscure reference, but I'm hoping that you kind of see the point I'm making where if you play around these three cost upgraded units, they can hold on to your items and save you a lot of HP. And remember that even if you have extra gold to roll down for some of the four costs, you don't feel as pressured because your board will be a lot more stable on stage 4. 
So in this in-game example, you can see it's a pretty stock standard Callista Fiora board. However, because my items are pretty forward focused, I don't really have too many defensive options. I am going to be playing around the four warrior until I get access to legendaries. I am of course trying to hit Fiora and Callista two star just because I have only AD items. Once I hit the Gwen two, it's a good item holder for the TG just to stabilize me, but I do need to roll a little bit deeper. And then once I get the Nasus pair and Callista pair, I'm incentivized to two star one of them. Once I do this, there's not really too much more I need to be rolling for as I'm very far away from spiking my board any further as I don't even have Fiora pair. Instead what I'm going to be doing is just rolling back down for charms if I need to. You can see after carousel I natural the Katarina 2 which means that I don't really need to be rolling back down for charms as this board should be stable enough for stage 4. Surely enough with this board I am able to get to level 9 without actually hitting Fiora 2 and then once I get to level 9 I can start to roll back down, try and make econ intervals hitting charms pretty much every single round of stage 5 and then sure enough once I start to get the 5 cost 2 stars I am able uh, to beat out most of the other boards. I do end up losing out to majors but you can see here how I didn't panic and roll back down for Fiora 2 enabled me to go second this lobby. And that is the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy learning about how to play fast eight into fast nine. It's a very strong strategy that most of the top players are utilizing. But in a lot of the coaching sessions I did recently, I noticed that a lot of players were just panicking on their all in on 4-2, breaking econ intervals and just playing really, really desperately when they didn't need to. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, come hang out with me on Twitch or in my Discord where I can answer the questions there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.